This lick originally comes from a 1934 recording of Honeysuckle Rose by Dick McDonough, but it is attributed to a then 21-year-old George Van Epps. It is actually an elaborate turnaround. D suspended, G diminished, G, C minor, A7, C minor, G. Simplified, it'll be easier to adapt to the chord changes of a jazz blues. And with a little effort, it's quite riffable. Now you want to keep the G as a top note and underneath the double stops just move up and down. Now when we take the riff, if we want to take that to C7, uh, we could play the more or less equivalent, but maybe theoretically more correct would be Now, not all upper joints of fingers are alike, so if you can't play that B and G string both with your middle fingers, then slide into a little bar with your index finger. It's all awkward fingering, so a lot easier, but a little further from the original track would be... And whatever we did to C7, we can do to D7 as well. And then would, that would give us a simple blues. Uh, if you play it as broken chords, you would get... Now that would be stylistically more of a post-war approach. It'll be just as easy to play all that in G and E position, so all keys are in your lap. Or the lake that we've chosen. Do try and experiment with all these different options. Now for a jazz blues, the move from G to E is just a slide down in sixths. For A7, we could use uh, the second part of that original Van Epps lick, using G as a substitute for E minor 7. They're pretty much the same. But we encounter A minor 7 here more often, so it's better to play and then do the D7 bit. So let's see where this jazz blues brings us. <laughs> 